Currently, some of the most significant events we have surrounding the markets right now are first of all the fear and speculation of inflation and interest rates going up. Then we also have President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan as well as a chip shortage which actually influences many different sectors and also causes a lot of businesses to benefit from it. And so given the context of all these current events, I'm going to reveal my top stock picks and ETFs that I am buying right now. Right. Before we begin though, as the famous Graham Stephan loves to say, do me a very quick favor by extremely gently smashing the like button and obliterating it for the YouTube algorithm. And you can also consider subscribing to my channel as well for more cutting edge videos about hobby investing. And with that, let's get started with the video. Before we get into my top few stocks and ETFs, let me actually first give you a brief update on one of my previous picks from some of my previous videos, which is Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. And the main thing I want to touch on here is that the stock was previously beaten down by the probing done by the Chinese government for so-called monopolistic practices, during which I actually slowly picked up a few more shares of the stock. But in a lot of people's opinion, uh, and also the reason that it was sort of beaten down and a bit hovering at a lower range, is that there is a lot of fear given um, people were sort of uncertain what the Chinese government would do to the company. But just a few days ago, the Chinese government ended up just fining the company about $2.8 billion, which sounds like a hefty amount, but is actually just less than 1% of their market cap. And with that, we actually saw a huge pop in the stock price as well of, I believe, around 6%. And the reason for that is likely that a lot of the fear and uncertainty surrounding, again, what will happen to the company has sort of gone away due to the government just giving the company essentially a slap on the wrist. Do you hear me? I'm not afraid anymore! And so even though the stock price has gone up quite a bit in the past few days, I'm still holding on to my position as I still believe that Alibaba is fairly undervalued. Not to mention because of what happened, um, there seems to be less risk and perhaps more peace of mind from owning the stock because it'll be more uh, less likely excuse me, that the government will do some kind of really severe regulation uh, to the company. Of course! And the second thing I want to briefly recap, which I actually went into more extensively in my previous video, which you can still check out, is inflationary forces and the possibility of interest rates going up. And more recently, Kathy Wood points out in her latest ARK Invest update a lot of potential inflationary and deflationary uh, possibilities. And if you're looking to check that out, I'll link Kathy's video in the description box below, as well as another one by Meet Kevin, which I think explains things quite well in more layman's terms and also expresses his own opinions regarding what Kathy says about these inflationary or deflationary forces. Now in terms of how this actually relates to investing in the stock market, well first of all with higher interest rates, it'll be a bit more enticing for people to want to invest in other things other than stocks, right? Like putting their money into bonds for example and even in a savings account, god forbid. But um, another thing is that it'll be more expensive for companies to borrow money, right? And especially, this especially hits uh, growth companies harder because it'll be more risky for them who are who have their uh, stock prices generally priced many years on the line to borrow money right plus as i mentioned in my previous video if interest rates continue to go up this could actually create a trend or a cycle rather of um, where value stocks outperform growth stocks and these cycles typically last for several years and in fact we have actually already been in a growth outperforming value stocks cycle for the past i think 10 years or so and so because of this, even though I would still consider myself more of a growth and disruption investor, by taking this into consideration, I have been slightly uh, diversifying a bit more into more uh, value-oriented plays, not necessarily completely mature companies that pay out a bunch of dividends, but rather companies that have a bit of growth and value within them, being that it is a, or they are stable companies, but also still have a bit of growth ahead of them. And now getting into the main event, I'll first run through some of the details regarding President Biden's new $2 trillion dollar infrastructure plan. The proposal states that it'll put $621 billion, first of all, into transportation infrastructure, which includes electronic vehicle development. This is very important. And then there's also going to be $400 billion to care for elderly and disabled Americans. Great, but not necessarily as related to what stocks I'm going to be purchasing. And then anyhow, we also have $300 billion into improving drinking water infrastructure and clean water, as well as expanding broadband access and upgrading electric grids. So this uh, broadband portion I think it's very important, especially with 5G being on the cusp of uh, widespread adoption, right? And then there's also going to be five, uh, 300 billion, excuse me, into building and retrofitting affordable housing, um, constructing, upgrading schools, 
And lastly, we have 580 billion into more general uh, manufacturing, research and development, and job training efforts. Now, first of all, the broader recommendation, especially by a lot of news outlets, is to look at certain ETFs that are actually impacted by this infrastructure plan, such as uh, for transportation, we have one called IYT, which actually includes a lot of uh, transportation and delivery type uh, holdings. As you can see, they have FedEx uh, being the largest holding as well as UPS being a pretty significant um, holding as well. And both of these delivery stuffs have actually benefited greatly from the pandemic in that a lot of people have been ordering stuff online and also there being an e-commerce boom sort of as a result. Not to mention with more and better transportation infrastructure and efficiency, this will definitely benefit both stocks as well as many of the other stocks and companies that are in the ETF as well. However, compared to some of the other benefactors of this infrastructure plan, this period delivery and transportation play, which by the way excludes things like electronic vehicles and charging stations, doesn't interest me as much. And this is also because um, some of the stock prices as well as the ETF price are around all-time highs. And so and unless there's a more significant pullback, I'm not going to be buying this right now. And in my opinion, the same can be said for another large ETF that will benefit from this plan, which is the Invesco Water Resources ETF, ticker symbol PHO. Because even though many of these companies should in fact benefit from this plan for a long time even, I still don't think that um, this actually represents a lot of the uh, innovative tech right, of tomorrow that will also benefit from the plan um, that I would actually be more inclined to invest in. And with that, getting into the next ETF that I'm actually a lot more interested in buying right now, we have Defiance's 5G Next Gen Connectivity ETF, ticker symbol FIVG. And the way that this ETF stands to benefit from President Biden's plan is that he has promised 100% high-speed broadband coverage across the country. However, I'm not going to be buying this ETF very aggressively compared to a couple of the others that I'll show you later right now because of how high the price currently is with it being pretty much at all-time highs. Plus, if you take a look at some of its top holdings such as NXP Semiconductors, which by the way produces processors for a lot of products related to communication and broadband and Wi-Fi and things like that, for 5G of course, um, the price is quite high, pretty much at all-time highs as well, and it also has a PE ratio of over 1,100, which in my opinion is a bit too high uh, for this particular stock. But as for some of the other holdings within the ETF, there are a few stocks that I either already own and or that I think are actually undervalued. So if we take a look at some of the other large holdings, we also have Qualcomm, which I think is a great company and I've actually continued buying into it. And there's also Zillings, which um, AMD is actually acquiring, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's also Skyworks Solutions, which is yet another uh, provider for Apple, which is, by the way, also another uh, fairly significant 5G player. And of these 5G related companies within the ETF, the main one that I have already been adding to is Qualcomm because again of what I believe to be a relative underpricing to its potential plus um, it's not yet at its, um, it's a bit below its all time high not to mention its 4P is quite healthy as well in my opinion at around 17. And since my bullish thesis on Qualcomm has not really changed since the last video, nor has their stock price changed too much, although it has gone up a few dollars, you can still check out my previous video in which I cover it in a lot more depth, which I'll also link in the description box of this video. Next up, because President Biden's plan will also create a lot of infrastructure and develop clean energy, another ETF that I have on my radar is the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, ticker symbol ICLN. This one, although I am going to be buying, but I'm not going to do so very aggressively as well due to if we look at its top holdings, we'll see that Plug Power is actually its number one holding by far at over 9.44%. And even though Plug Power stock price has seen quite a bit of a dip as of late, because it is a purely hydrogen fuel cell play, which is different from a EV and charging play, by the way, um, I believe that the technology is a bit too far out to sort of justify the market cap that it currently has at 19 plus billion. And this is the biggest reason why I'm not going to be purchasing ICLN that aggressively compared to another individual play that is also a holding within the ETF being the second largest holding at 5.81% Enphase Energy, ticker symbol ENPH. 
Enphase is, in my opinion, a great solar energy play, which is well known for one of their components that they make for solar panels that makes things a lot more efficient and is also very far ahead of their competitors. And if you take a quick look at its current stock price and statistics, I don't believe that it's too expensive, especially within the solar energy industry. For example, if we take a look at its forward P, it is currently at 55.5, which is a bit on the expensive side, but not too bad, right? Especially for a growth stock. And if we look at its uh, PEG ratio, speaking of growth, it is currently at 1.87, which some may argue that it's a bit high as well. But again, remember that this is a growth stock that very much is favored and has a lot of um, tailwinds, so to speak, that are also from the government, right? And again, looking at its stock price at around $150, it is still a ways down from its all-time high at $229. Next for an individual play that I'm also picking up that is also in the renewable energy, clean energy, um, charging, and EV space, we have ChargePoint, ticker symbol CHPT. Now ChargePoint for me is a bit of a speculative and growth play, but in my opinion, it's still a lot less speculative than something like a Plug Power, which even though it's still a uh, very immature, I suppose, and far out technology compared to EVs and EV charging stations, its market cap is a lot greater for that company at least, with Plug Power's market cap being at around 19 billion, while charge points, despite being the largest charging station provider in the world, being at uh, 7.5 billion. And with ChargePoint being the largest EV charging network in the world with over 65% market share, not to mention, in my opinion, the inevitability of electric vehicles taking over traditional um, gas-powered vehicles, plus with the US government backing EVs and charging stations, including with the $2 trillion infrastructure plan, I believe that by investing in ChargePoint, this gives me a great way to get exposed within this um, industry. It's nice. And that's not even all I'm buying within the electronic vehicle space because I'm actually looking to purchase, on the dip at least, Mighty Tesla Maesa, which is trading a bit more expensive right now. But like I said, I'm definitely going to keep adding to this upon each dip that I can um, find. And also, I'm going to be buying more aggressively even compared to most of the other plays that I mentioned in this video. And the main reason for this is that even though you know the stock has already risen in price tremendously and it's a very perhaps one would argue overhyped stock and a lot of people are saying that it's way too expensive and has an incredibly high PE ratio, I strongly believe that Tesla as well as Elon Musk have already very firmly established themselves at the forefront of the EV space which again is still in its infancy right so that in and of itself has a lot of space to grow and not to mention by having this dominance especially for example with how Tesla has built out a lot of the infrastructure for their business in terms of charging stations as well as collecting data for autonomous driving there are tons of other business opportunities that tesla will definitely be getting into that in my opinion has yet to really be priced in um, to the stock price it's showtime and in case you have yet to see or hear about this report arc invest recently put out some price targets for tesla which again is also one of their largest holdings where their um, bull case is at three thousand or four thousand dollars and even the bear case has a price target of fifteen hundred dollars by 2025. So those are the main plays I've been looking at that can also benefit greatly from President Biden's new two trillion dollar infrastructure plan and also the general trends of the world um, for the future. And lastly, for the final part of this video, I want to just give you a friendly reminder that there is in fact a global chip shortage that is affecting many different industries from graphics cards to um, electric vehicles as well. And one of the companies primed to benefit the most from this increased demand, in my opinion, is Taiwan Semiconductor, which actually creates parts or semiconductors for huge customers like Apple, Qualcomm, uh, Nvidia, and AMD. Now, according to them, TSMC's foundries are currently already operating at 100% capacity to try to meet demand, although there is more demand, right? And so to address that, they're actually also going to invest $100 billion over the next three years to expand upon that production capacity. And so despite already being an established, stable, dividend-paying company, there's still yet a ton of growth ahead of them given this increased demand. Plus, even though TSMC is a foreign company, it still has quite a bit of support from the US, being that not only are a lot of its customers in the US, but also they're actually, um, they actually got the okay to build a $12 billion foundry right in Arizona, which actually is starting construction this year. Now, I'll definitely do a deeper dive on this company later on, so stay tuned for that video. But first, let me take a quick look at its stock price and statistics 
is currently trading at around $121, which is down from its all-time high of $142. It pays out a, a dividend of 1.45%, which I think is a nice bonus. But anyhow, if we check out its 4P, it's 27.75. Not the cheapest right now, but its PEG ratio is 1.18. Not bad considering um, this actually factors in its growth, right? And uh, more impressively, in my opinion, is its balance sheet, where its current ratio is 1.77, which means that um, if we divide its total cash by its total debt, its ratio is almost uh, at 2 to 1, which makes it uh, quite good or quite safe in that respect where it has a lot of cash to spend. And that is pretty much all I wanted to cover in today's video. Remember to pick up your free stocks from Robinhood and Webull, which are free brokerages using the links below. And you can also check out my other YouTube channel where I cover digital entrepreneurship and how to make money online so that you can potentially make some side cash and that you can use to invest as well. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. Like it if you liked it and found it helpful. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.